So now, uh, how to grow a web corpus? So what happens when you, what's the process inside have when you start with your pages and you, you, you grow your corpus? It has, so web entities, and I'm gonna explain what web entities are later on, but you can think of them as websites, right? Groups of pages, because there are too many pages. So the network of pages would be unbearable to study. Instead, we group pages by packets, right? We call web entities, but think of them as websites for the moment. So the websites uh, known by Hive are of four different kinds. The, your corpus itself is the in. So it means you've put the web entity inside your corpus. You've said, I want this one. It's your basket if you want, right? The out is web entities you know that you don't want. And we remember we don't want them because we will find them again and again. So we cannot just delete them. We have to remember that we know them and we know we don't want them. Now, sometimes in the process, you can't decide at the moment if you want it or if you don't want it because you, have, uh, you are still reflecting on your criteria, right? So you, can, you have a kind of a joker. You can, you can say, okay, I suspend my decision for the moment and then we'll, it, the entity will become undecided until you pick it as an in or you reject it as an out. And finally, there are the discovered. So the discovered web entities are the web entities that, ha that have been discovered by Hive in the sense that they are um, cited by the website you know. So they are in the end of the hyperlinks. But we've not crawled them. So we presume they exist. They might even not exist, actually, because the link has an error or because the website has disappeared. But it has existed in some way or it is cited in some way. And it, it might even exist in the future again. You know, that's how the web works. It's an address that it has been cited somewhere. So these discovered web entities are known by Hive, but of course they have not been crawled. And as soon as you crawl a discovered web entity, it becomes one of the other status. So let's deal as the web as if it were a, a map, a territory, like, you know, a normal map, a flat map. So you, you start by having a few uh, starting pages, starting web entities. So you put that in Hive and they become the in. So let's say we have one here, one web entity. It's set to in and we crawl it. And when we crawl it, we find hyperlinks to other new web entities. And it means that we know the border of this web entity. So the border of the web entity is discovered. We presume it exists, but we've not crawled them. Um, so what we do now is we expand our corpus. So we take a look, we pick one, and we look at whether we want it inside our corpus or not. So let's look at one. We decide it's, it's good, so we add it to the in. But by doing so, we crawl it. It means we find more discovered entities. So, of course, the corpus grows, but the border of discovered grows too, right? Now, sometimes you take a look at the, these entities and you don't want them because, for instance, they are in another topic, right? So then you, you set them as out. And when you set them as out, we don't look at their neighbors, right? So that's the difference between setting something in and out except that some go into your corpus and the others don't, is that we crawl the in, but we don't crawl the out. The out has no border because it is kind of the dead border, the actual border of your corpus. It's the, the, the part of the corpus that you know is the border, while the discovered is the part of the corpus that is temporarily unknown, is the, the frontier of the unknown. It's your horizon, if you want. So this process goes on and on. And sometimes you put the entity out, sometimes you put it in and it expands. So the corpus will grow in kind of unexpected uh, directions until at some point you've found all the corpus. So the important point here is that there is only a finite number of web entities that match your criteria 
also because there is a finite number of entities on the web, even though it's huge, right? So on principle, at some point, it stops. So once you have all the in, any new entity you take a look at in the discovered becomes out, of, of course. So that's why if you keep doing that again and again and again and again, at some point you have no more discovered and you have only the in and the out. And then the out is the border of your corpus, the, the frontier, right? So I'm almost done with this part, but I just need to tell you that <laughs> on the web topology, this metaphor doesn't unfold as it looks like, right? So you do have the in, the out, the discovery. It works, less, like I said, but the space is not the same. So first of all, you have much more neighbors than in a flat space. You know, in my previous example, each cell had six cells around, but on the web, it's more like 10, 100, 1,000 more sometimes, right? So websites can have many, 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 many neighbors. And then the number of links of these neighbors are extremely uh, different as we have seen earlier too. So you know that Wikipedia has a huge amount of links compared to a blog, right? And I mean orders and orders and orders of, of magnitudes more. So some neighbors are hugely cited, but most neighbors are not hugely cited. And finally, this means that some of the frontier, some of the, of the border is not around, but in the center, which is unintuitive. But let's say you don't want Wikipedia. Wikipedia will be a neighbor to many, many, many web entities in your website. So even though it's kind of the exterior border, it's also in the middle of your corpus in some ways, because everyone cites it, right? So it, it's good to figure out that the border is around, because in the topological sense it is around, but this around in the weird topology of the web is also sometimes in the middle, in the center. So that's counterintuitive. But if you think of it as a map, you will still be able to navigate in the way Hive works. So let's, I, I just need now to make a specific point about time in your process of harvesting a corpus. And I'm gonna explain things that way. Let's say every 30 seconds, you categorize a website, either as in or out. So you have a steady rhythm, a constant rhythm, a constant uh, speed of categorizing web entities. So this constant speed is the diagonal that you, you see here, right? So under the diagonal, you have the in and the out because either you set them in or you set them out, okay? So the discovered are in addition to that. And the fact is, there is a moment in your corpus where you have found all the in. So all the websites that exist that match your criteria, and from that moment, you will never find a new website in, okay? So after that moment, after that moment, you, the in will stay flat. You don't add any more in. And you, what you're just doing is looking at a discovered and set it to out, right? And this is super in, improductive, right? This is the, you don't want to spend that time. But, and here I have been very nice because I have assumed a proportion of in to the rest of like one over 10, but the real proportion is more like one over 1000, <laughs> right? So it means that if you were to go to the end, you would lose all of your time because you have diminishing returns. So in the beginning, you find many in, but at some point you find less and less, you have more and more noise and less and less good things you want to have in your corpus. Right? And that's also the moment where the number of discovered explodes, right? So what you want to do is never go to the end, even though in principle that's how it, it would work. I, and I have seen that only in one case where a web community was so closed on itself that they were prohibiting any links to a website out of the community. So then you could have everything. It happens only once in my whole life. So what you usually want to do is to find the, the sweet spot where 
depending on the time you have, it's not worth going beyond that. And to take this decision, Hive is helping you because it's, it gives you a figure about um, how many of the most cited discovered you have seen. And I'm going to show that to you now super quickly because that's the idea behind the, um, the prospection feature. So let's go back to the jazz corpus. Let's say I'm in, in the process of harvesting the community of jazz and I'm going to go in the prospect. We, we will see later the details of this page, but basically what you have to um, imagine is that we have an in, we have many, many discovered web entities, and here in this situation we have 4,000, so it's actually a lot, <laughs> and they have been classed, uh, sorted, sorry, they have been sorted from the most cited to the less cited, right? So the most cited discovered web entity is YouTube with 13 other web entities that I know who cite it, and then NPR, Google, Wikipedia, and then it goes down, 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 and this follows, if you're familiar with graph theory, it follows a, a power law. I mean, in this log log scale, it looks like a line, whatever. The thing is, one way to um, validate my corpus is to systematically um, classify until a certain threshold. So for instance, let's go to four here. So I'm gonna put to out, the little O here means I set to out. All the web entities I don't want, I don't want Instagram, I don't want Manspace. I'm gonna do that without very good criteria, whatever, it's just to show the process. And then I'm gonna keep the one that are making sense to me, jazz, jazz times, Twitter intent I don't want, this one I don't want. Okay, so now I have made all the five or more citations. And I'm going to crawl the two I have added. And if they, they will find more links, so possibly it will change. But for the moment, I can say that I have seen and I have systematically sorted and classified all the entities that have been cited at least five times in my corpus. And by that, I mean by at least five different web entities. If I have more time, I can have a lower threshold, right? But basically, if someone tells me, well, I have this super famous web jazz a website that I have created and I'm not in your corpus. So what is worth your work, right? You can say, well, one of the two things happened. Either you are cited less than five times, so it means to, that according to my criteria, you're not famous enough. Or I have seen you, but you don't match my criteria, so I set you out, for instance, because uh, you're not really or mainly about jazz, or I have a certain definition of jazz, and that's not your definition, so I set you out. So that's how you validate the quality, the relative exhaustiveness of your corpus, even though you stop before doing all this improductive uh, uh, work of uh, passing the noise to find just a little bit of interesting stuff.